I don't believe in coincidences. Um, one of the awesome tasks that I have at my job is to discover the J. Ivies that exist in school. So I don't believe that it, was a co it is a coincidence that I get to follow such a magnificent person. So intellectual speed bumps. Several years ago, I became an elementary school principal. And it was like being at the bottom of a rainbow, except the Skittles didn't fall. <laughs> the reality was, it was the equivalent to standing at the base of a waterfall, every now and then trying to take a gasp of air. The significance of the lives, the impact that I would have, unbearable. The school needed some structure. And so I thought, which I often heard from parents and from teachers, the kids are out of control. They're running through the hallway. So as principal, I needed to find a way to get the students to slow down. But in schools, you don't want students to just slow down. You want students to slow down and think. Hence the word intellectual speed bump. So what happens in places like Germantown? Well, we have about 10 or 11 countries represented several different languages. So our job is to provide opportunities for our students to communicate, solve problems, and to find that even in their differences, they can still be right. So we have learners of all abilities, all demographics. We have activities like International Family Night, where usually the race or language that is spoken is oftentimes seen as a negative. So my awesome task was to find a way to make this a positive experience for all learners. One of the things we had to creatively do, because you pick up the newspaper anytime today, you find that schools are often viewed by their assessment scores. MSAs and now the big elephant in the room, Common Core. We had to find a way to tell the narrative of the stories that are taking place daily. So one of the things that I grew up having being asked to do was to, are you ready to learn? Turn your brain switch on. So we implemented school uniforms and you know we were told there's no data that would say that just because a student dressed a certain way that they would perform a certain way. So we said, okay, let's accept that challenge. So we implemented school uniforms. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I grew up believing that when you have on your work clothes, it's time to work. So something physical, school uniform, and students hated to tuck in their shirts. So they came to school, shirts untucked. So I thought, hmm, are you ready to learn? That's so abstract for students. So what we started to do is say, when you tuck your shirt in, you're now ready to learn. So if you look at the picture, our students are ready to learn. How do I know? Because their shirts are tucked in. And when I see a student in the hallway, I don't have to say, are you ready to learn? I ask them, is your shirt tucked in? They already make the connection. And when it's not, they just tuck their shirts in. So that's their ticket to get into the classroom. That's their ticket to the next level. So in a school like Germantown, we like to say our students are really spicy. They're the atypical learners that need something different. So we bring in practitioners, and we have students making smoothies. So we take a common activity, cooking, and we have our students talk about it in their native language. And oh, and I forgot to say that 50% of our students are native Spanish speaking students, 70% of our students live in poverty, and we have the audacity to teach our students Italian. But it's all about perspective. And so as we're on this IB primary years program continuum, what we're trying to do is open doors, provide opportunities, to promote language development and also to get our students to think.
Shirts are tucked in, our students are ready to learn. So we have activities like boys can read too. And what do we do? We find other people who can repeat the stories that our, our students are hearing on a daily basis. So it's important for the students to see people who look like them, but most importantly, it's good for our students to hear people hold them accountable into a higher level of learning. So we bring people in, uh, this is my good friend Lamar Shields, and you look at those boys, room full of boys, focused, and this event was at six o'clock at night, so they've gone through their entire day, but if you look at the picture, they're focused, ready to learn. Shirts are still tucked in. So we can have our students read about an ice sculptor, or we can have an ice sculptor come into the school and, school and talk about how he used to play with food. So an ice sculptor that used to play with food now is creating art out of a block of ice. So this is one of those activities that has an intended consequence that our students can understand that there are people outside of the walls of our school that want to see them excel so they take the time to come in to provide a powerful experience, all centered around the learner. So we had a problem. I told you about students running in the hallway. The teachers came to me. We have students running in the hallway. It's out of control. You have to do something about that. Okay, we're gonna do something about that. So I grabbed our school mascot, which is Premier, and I walked out of my office with Premier, and the teacher said, well, what are you gonna do? I said, well, you said there's a problem running, so we have to solve this problem. So I placed Premier in the place in our building that teacher said students ran. So I placed this statue, it's probably about, about 12 inches high, placed it in the hallway. The teacher said, they're gonna run it, they're gonna knock it down. You shouldn't do that. I'm telling you, they're running. Okay, placed it there. Not only did the students walk, I mean, you know, there's an eagle in the middle of the, the hallway, so they walked, but something special happened when they got into the classroom. They started to inquire. They started to talk. They started to discuss. Their hands were up before it was even time to learn. I mean, there's a set time, nine o'clock, okay, boys and girls, your breakfast, place your breakfast to the side. Now time to learn, make sure your shirts are tucked in. They came in. Hands are raised, they're ready to learn. Why is Premier in the hallway? So we want our students to ask questions. So the teachers were like, oh my goodness, the students are asking questions. I said, so now they're on the path of inquiry. So now they have a question, what do we do? We want our students to move into action. So our students have to come up with why Premier is in the hallway. I bet you Premier is in the hallway because we were the best in the school. Okay. <laughs> so all of a sudden this rumor went through the school from the students that if you're doing the right thing, Premier will show up in the hallway. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my goodness, now I gotta find a way to get Premier all throughout the school. So wouldn't you know, in between lunch shift, they're right, Premier did move. And all of a sudden, not only were shirts tucked in, not only were students walking, but the teachers were looking like, that's kind of creepy. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if there's a camera inside of Premier. And he's, finding, <laughs> he's finding a way to monitor our behavior. <laughs> no camera. Intellectual speed bump. Slow down and think. Now that our students are thinking, not only are they ready to learn, but now they're ready to communicate and ask each other questions. So one question begets two questions, two questions begets three, four questions, and so forth. But the whole idea is that they're focused, they're doing what we expect them to do, they're exceeding expectations, they're writing about it, they're talking about it. Did I mention their shirts are tucked in? <laughs> so important to me. So what else happens at Germantown? So we have this idea about cognitive apprenticeship. So we wear school uniforms, and then we have these days that are called dress down days and the students can wear whatever they want. So not only do we look for data like 
how our students doing academically, but we see if our behavior is imprinting on our students' behavior. It has to be an apprenticeship. We want our students to be intellectual. So on the day when the principal wears a Ravens jersey, the students dress like the principal. Not because they're told to do that, but all of a sudden, the standard becomes to look a certain way. And if the standard becomes to look a certain way, the standard becomes to behave a certain way. If I behave a certain way, I'm ready to learn. If I'm engaged in learning, I get more opportunities. If I get more opportunities, the better prepared I am. So we have two students that I just had to get a picture because, I mean, the principal has his shirt untucked and the students have their shirts tucked. So when we think about mindsets, we have these perceptions about what students can do, what they're able to do. So we have to find a way to change how we see students. So as you look at this slide, some of you may say, well, that's a piece of coal. Or when I look at that, I think that's an awesome intellectual speed bump. There's an opportunity for me to find the precious gem that exists inside of all of our students. Intellectual speed bumps. What's your intellectual speed bump that's meant to get you to slow down and think? Thank you. <laughs>